Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Aero Unite with IBM Public Cloud. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. You should see a box in the upper right corner of your desktop. This is your control panel. You are listening in using your computer speaker system by default. If you would prefer to join us by a phone, just select telephone in the audio tab and the dial in information will be displayed. You do have the opportunity to submit questions to today's presenters by typing your questions into the question pane on your control panel. You may send in your questions at any time throughout the presentation. We will collect these and they will be addressed separately after the webinar through email. I would like to now introduce you to Nalu Reddy with IBM. Thank you, Katie. Uh, good afternoon and good morning, those are, who are on the West Coast. Uh, thank you for joining this webinar organized by Arrow and uh, participated uh, by IBM. We thank you for your time. Today, uh, we have put together an agenda for you that'll take you through the IBM Public Cloud journey, our journey, and generally speaking, the IBM, uh, generally speaking, the regular public cloud journey as well. A little bit of that, we'll speak to it. We'll also look at how the market is growing and what are the implications to you. Then we will get into introducing to you the new IBM cloud. We call it the Chapter 2 cloud uh, because we have been in the cloud before and we wanted to introduce you uh, the new IBM Cloud that we launched in 2019. And we will discuss some of the differentiators. This is the most important part of the presentation, the IBM differentiators vis-a-vis -vis the market, what else is being offered, how IBM differentiates its public cloud, and why it matters to you. Then we will get into a little bit into the workloads, and we will introduce to you the workloads that we are seeing that are going to the cloud today. Of those, then, uh, I understand that today we wanted to have a little bit of slant on VMware workloads. So we have introduced uh, or actually included a few VMware cloud slides for you that we will talk to you and introduce our IBM VMware cloud. After that, we will present to you some of the promos that are available to you as clients so that you can take advantage of uh, in terms of having your journey get started in terms of going and taking the workloads from the on-premise environment into the IBM public cloud. With that, let's get the, to the first slide here. So I wanted to kind of step back to about around the time frame of 2008 and uh, discuss about this, um, if you will, the birth or the, you know, the birth of the uh, cloud and cloud infrastructure and cloud services, et cetera. Back then, we were seeing some of these companies that were born on the cloud, uh, whether it is Netflix or even AWS, you know, Amazon, actually, um, and many other companies that were beginning to shape up um, and were kind of born on the cloud, and they were defining new ways of computing or consuming computing in a different way. Of course, um, AWS kind of learned that they could uh, maybe um, capture the market by packaging up what they were using, and then they entered the marketplace with their cloud. Subsequently, Microsoft entered into the space as well. Of course, uh, IBM followed suit with our own top layer acquisition, and we got into the cloud game as well. And of course, Google uh, entered uh, from a consumer side of the house into the business cloud as well. So all these cloud providers, these are the top four today as uh, people see them, um, have started at different places. Uh, obviously, it has started with you know, um, providing their computing that they used um, and monetized that as a product and started selling. Uh, Microsoft leveraged their office franchise very well with Azure and started getting into, um, into those um, areas where they could peel off several lines of businesses types of um, solutions, maybe with, even with their office suite, et cetera, with uh, 360 um, and so on and so forth. And while IBM soft layer 
acquisition was very good uh, for several of our customers, it did have a few shortcomings. Um, one of the shortcomings was uh, lack of true virtualization. The, also the tra lack of networking virtualization. So it did a few things very, very good uh, for several of the customers, and we did very well where we engaged in those spaces, but we did uh, have a few shortcomings, as I said. So some of the learnings we had from this were that the cloud services were clearly driving innovation and disrupting businesses, and new businesses are being born, et cetera. There's also significant advantage to taking the workloads to the cloud in terms of cost itself. Later on, I will share a very, very important uh, piece of information where you could see why it is very cost effective to take your workloads to the cloud vis-a-vis uh, -vis for VMware clouds, uh, if you will. Um, in spite of all these benefits that the cloud infrastructure provides, IBM feels and knows that only 20% of the entire workloads have moved to the cloud. There are reasons for that. I will speak to you a little bit later. Let's kind of step away a little bit from that, um, you know, what happened in the cloud space to what is happening currently. So first I wanted to train your eye to that little graph on the right-hand side bottom corner. Uh, it's an eye chart, but I'll describe to you because um, there are only two bars in it. It's easy to describe to you. The blue bars represent the last dozen years or so the infrastructure spending on premise. As you could see, it, uh, it was fairly high level. It uh, was growing, uh, you know, very little. Then it plateaued and actually, uh, you know, maybe beginning to decline. Uh, by the end of 2018, uh, the blue bars, as you could see, kind of stagnated. So that represents that the fact that a lot of hardware infrastructure spending is coming to a halt. Alternatively, when you look at the yellow bars, that picture is very different. As you could see, that within short 10, 12 years of, of time, uh, the infrastructure spending in the cloud, so these are cloud infrastructure spending that the clients like you have been making, it caught up by end of 2018. And in 2019, I'm sure the yellow bars are much taller than the blue bars. And I think it'll continue to uh, be that way uh, for the foreseeable future. And actually, I would, if I were to bet uh, the hardware infrastructure spending on premise will actually precipitatively fall going into the future. Um, this is just the last 10, 12 years statement. But of course, there has been 30, 25, 30 years of investment in the on-premise space. So there's quite a bit of um, infrastructure that is still lying around uh, in spite of the, um, the spending being equal currently. So, um, so what is driving this growth? Why is this uh, hardware infrastructure spending going down? And why is the cloud infrastructure spending going up? Well, IBM believes that Roughly within this period of five years, of 2018 to 23, there are going to be about 500 million new applications that will be built and rolled out. Now, these are not the old, you know, our father's version of our uh, applications that are monolithic, uh, but actually, but actually, these are the applications that are, These are uh, microservices based applications that are uh, microservices based and these uh, these and microservices based applications i think somebody is probably on uh, unmuted and it's giving a little echo so i would re request that whoever is not speaking to go on mute please if you don't mind so these 500 million applications are microservices driven and they are based on the new cloud infrastructure, essentially, and not on the on-prem. And that's why the cloud infrastructure spending is going high. The second thing I wanted to talk about is the new innovation. Most of the new innovation, particularly the business innovation, is happening in the cloud infrastructure. And new applications will all feature uh, these microservices architectures. And the key is in 
taking all these services and expressing them as consumable cloud services. Uh, so that you can piece together all these microservices to then create your application workflows. So that is what will drive this innovation. And lastly, but not least, about 35% of all these new production applications will be cloud native, meaning they will definitely use open infrastructures, open DevOps, and application development tools, et cetera, going forward. So this is what's driving the the infrastructure uh, cloud infrastructure spending as opposed to on-prem infrastructure spending so let's go to this slide here so remember uh, in spite of all the investment and in spite of all the um, workloads going to the cloud IBM feels that there's only 20 percent actual workloads that have moved to the cloud I'm talking about business you know applications 80 percent is still remaining why is that so well, you know, reasons are not hard to guess, right? The first reason is that it is a hard business to take stuff, you know, even from on-prem to on-prem. And when you're taking a journey and kind of, you know, taking a leap into the cloud, it may be a little bit more harder too. And there is also complexity. The complexity around security, compliance is a huge task to overcome because you're still maintaining your on-prem infrastructure management of that, and then your resources are consumed in it, and having to learn new technology, new services, new skills, new capability doesn't come easily. That's where I think you can rely on your partners and Arrow and IBM to help you. But the complexity is one of the reasons why the workloads aren't moving at a faster pace. The second reason is that the average enterprise uh, customer is supposed to have anywhere from three to five different clouds, whether they are SaaS services or just a workload uh, running in a cloud uh, for a specific application. Um, and like that, they have three to five different clouds. We need something that can get your arms around all of those clouds in a multi-cloud management aspect. It's not easy to do that because if you spread all your applications and your workloads in various different clouds, then it becomes very hard to manage and go out of control very easily. And perhaps you're not even optimizing everything because if, when you spread out that much, as you know, uh, if you don't have you know manageable number of platforms, uh, then things start going bad. Of course, we talked about the skills, right? Um, having to run on-prem and then gaining new skills is a tough task to do. So this 80% of the workloads we be, believe are still there for you know, um, uh, targeting them properly and then methodically shifting them to the cloud. So what IBM did is, this is where IBM stepped in. So fully knowing that we were a little bit behind with our software acquisition and you know the shortcomings I mentioned, IBM kind of put its head down the last few years and built this new cloud. We call it as the IBM Cloud Chapter 2. And we like to discuss our and present our cloud in these three characterizations or three pillars, if you will around open innovation, around establishing leadership in the security space, and then of course, providing enterprise grade, hardened enterprise grade cloud workloads that are running in our clients on-premises environments. So these are the three things. I wanna go into each of these areas a little bit deeper in terms of giving you one or two highlights because these are where the differentiators come out versus what is available in the marketplace. So first of all, in the open innovation, uh, when we talk about open innovation, um, we tend to think, oh, Red Hat acquisition. Well, actually, to be honest, even before Red Hat acquisition was done, IBM around 2016 or so, 2016, 17, whenever Kubernetes kind of came out, um, we, we standardized on Kubernetes and we built our cloud from scratch using containers. So 
So everything that you see in IBM Public Cloud is based on containers. Every work, every piece of it, all the services are containerized. And that gives an immense amount of capability because you already know and perhaps have seen many studies where running your workloads in containers will not only allow you to gain operational efficiency and reduce cost, but also improve your performance because they are so well organized, you can orchestrate multiple clusters over multiple regions in multiple data centers. And as a result, you can put up a virtual data center with a click of few, you know, buttons and have an incredible infrastructure at your hands at your disposal. So that's what the open innovation and in running our cloud platform and building it on uh, containers and Kubernetes is key. The other thing that we also have done is we have leveraged many of the open source leadership projects um, that you see there on the slide. And using these um, containerized methodologies, we have now built over actually 200 plus cloud services that are available in our catalog. The way you buy IBM cloud services is you buy basically an account, like a debit card, you come into the account and then you pick and choose all the services you want and you select those and then you purchase it and then voila, then there is your virtual data center that you have created in the IBM public cloud. And these 190 plus services, they all have open APIs. What that means is that you don't have to stick around only with IBM. If you have done your work correctly, and you have made your um, workloads containerized, or even if they are VMware workloads, you can come to IBM Cloud, and if you find some better value elsewhere, you can pick up and leave. And IBM doesn't want to compete based on locked-in or reserve prices as some other cloud vendors do. What we would like to do is provide and compete based on performance and technology differentiation. That's what this open innovation is all about. Let's talk about the security leadership a little bit. Now, in this area, we clearly leapfrog the competition. How is that so? Well, IBM is the only cloud vendor that has this FIPS 142 level four keep your own key um, certified. You might have heard about bring your own key, but keep your own key is a little bit different. Keep your own key allows you to have several distinct advantages because it uses this HSM module uh, assist and it encrypts data at uh, many levels, right? It, uh, um, it, it, it allows you to encrypt data even, I believe, in RAM also. So what this does is that the um, the ability to not only manage the keys, but we actually allow the client to keep their own key. So it eliminates a couple of things. Uh, first, it will eliminate any hacking or you know rogue hacking by the provider. And also the second thing is, in the case of litigation, if the cloud provider is subpoenaed, um, you know we have to provide whatever the government asks you. Uh, but having the key deposited with the client allows the client to actually resist and litigate a little bit more strongly than the cloud provider would ever do. So there are distinct advantages of that on top of actually having better encryption itself. So there are three levels of benefits because of the keep your own key. And as you can see that we, um, uh, you know, the benefits of this is that, you know, absolutely we cannot see customer data. IBM cannot see customer data. For clients who have intellectual property and have uh, you know, business processes and capabilities that they do not want to divulge to anybody, IBM Cloud is a much, much safer place for them. Um, you know, it, it allows you to have even VMware workloads also protected by this keep your own key. In addition to this, we have hardened most of the public cloud services with the work that we have done with the Bank of America. Um, there were about 500 different uh, regulatory compliance issues and security requirements 
that we addressed with our first financial services cloud that we announced, which recently was joined by the BNP Paribas, which is one of the largest uh, banking um, company in Europe. And the hardened security services and these hardened compliance services, these were all flowed back into IBM Public Cloud. So when you buy the IBM Public Cloud and subscribe to the services, you're getting the benefit of those automatically because um, there is no extra thing that you need to buy except when you buy the financial services cloud, then there are some extra things that you will acquire. But most of the services, we have plowed back the hardening and the strengthening of the services back into our IBM Public Cloud. Let's shift to the last piece of it, the enterprise grade part of it. What do I mean by enterprise grade? Well, first, I think if you really look at it, IBM has multiple cloud services under our cloud umbrella. We have bare metal, we have VMware, we have power cloud, we have mainframe cloud, and then we also have, with the Red Hat acquisition, the best Red Hat OpenShift implementation and those workloads, Linux workloads and Red Hat OpenShift workloads that are available to us. So that's, and all of these are hardened and enterprise grade. And these are exactly what our clients want on their on-premise environment. We reflect that in the cloud. So that's number one. Secondly, our SLAs are leadership oriented. What I mean by that is we start a little early on the SLAs and our SLAs are a little bit more generous. And also our high, non-high availability is around 99.9%. We also have no backbone network charges that we charge for data that moves between data centers. If your workloads are running on multiple IBM data centers, um, you don't incur any charges uh, as of now, right? So you don't incur any charges. Um, I believe the marketplace, um, the market vendors, they charge for traffic that goes between the data centers. So that's a hidden fee that you will get hit with. Uh, with IBM, you don't have that. Um, and let's go to the next slide here. So here is a summary of what I was talking about. So there are three main areas, security leadership, enterprise grade, and open innovation. As you could see in security, there's just no comparison uh, because of you know FIPS 142 level, for certification and also the hardening of so many areas in the public cloud services. Uh, just, you know, there's nobody who can touch us in that area. In the enterprise grade, we also have the lead position. And you could see probably you're wondering why is platform as a service not a stronger bubble? Well, I will address that on the next slide because our um, PaaS area is actually served by our cloud packs. Uh, if you're familiar with our IBM middleware, uh, you might have heard that our middleware products have been packaged uh, into different bundles. We call them cloud packs. Uh, there are about six of them. And when you combine the cloud packs and run them in the IBM public cloud, so they are ready to be run in the IBM public cloud, uh, you just have to, you're just basically bringing your own license. And because of that, uh, we don't count that in our ranking. And when you add the cloud packs, this one actually goes to a very strong position. And in the enterprise grade space, as you could see, we have leadership. And open innovation, again, nobody can touch IBM in this space because IBM has been an incredible contributor to not only Linux, but many, many leadership open source projects. And we continue to maintain that. Even with Red Hat acquisition, we have an arm's length relationship with them as far as the open source development parts are concerned. So uh, because of that, uh, you know, we continue to uh, be the leaders, leaders in the open source uh, arena. So let's talk about strengthening that uh, path space. How do we do that? IBM does that with these IBM cloud paths. So here are some of the client use cases uh, for the various cloud packs. So we have cloud pack for applications, cloud pack for data, 
and so on and so forth. Very importantly, we have a cloud platform, multi-cloud management, which actually allows, if you are a client today consuming Microsoft or uh, Amazon cloud services, what we can do is we can coexist and actually manage, help you manage those workloads. When you figure out that you want to go to IBM, then you're wondering and worrying about how do I manage these multiple clouds. We make it easy for you with this uh, cloud platform multi-cloud management. I would urge you to continue to look to Arrow to see what webinars they will bring in the future. There will be bound to be something we will bring around multi-cloud management, which we would like you to attend. So with the cloud path, the our path story becomes very strong in addition to the IBM public cloud by itself. I wanted to kind of take a couple of minutes here on this particular slide. So everybody says, okay, Red Hat OpenShift. Well, it's also available on Microsoft and also uh, Amazon, right? AWS. What is so different with you? Well, IBM actually built a managed layer on top of Red Hat OpenShift. What Red Hat OpenShift did to containers, making it so easy to develop these containers and deploy them, uh, as opposed to working with a command line, if you will, as a Unix administrator or a Unix programmer, uh, it, it made it much easier to kind of use the containers. What IBM did is invested in this um, service called Red Hat OpenShift Kubernetes Services. We call it ROCs. And what it does is this provides this additional level and layer of management services that you're seeing here. Every single one of these is actually a direct value to your bottom line in terms of operational efficiency. This is a definite um, demonstration that you would have to uh, request and see. So talk to your partner about uh, having them share with you a presentation and Red Hat OpenShift and IBM Rocks, right? That's the key thing because it, it really shows you how Rocks can help manage your workloads in IBM Cloud Platform, and there is nothing like it. Uh, it's a very, very powerful way to manage your workloads in, in an IBM public cloud. So here is uh, some additional thing that the uh, IBM Red Hat OpenShift uh, Kubernetes service does. So you could see the first column is the IBM Cloud Rocks, you could see what are all the things that it does, right, or contributes to because of its management capabilities. And one of the things it really does well is allow you to deploy cloud packs uh, in hours. You can deploy an entire cloud pack, which normally takes uh, several days to a few short weeks. You can deploy it in about an hour, hour and a half in the IBM Cloud platform. Actually, if you have your license, you come into the IBM Cloud, you put your license keys and fire up the cloud pack uh, to run on IBM Cloud Platform. So what that does is it allows you to escape having to find the resources, having to know all the um, interdependencies of software code, et cetera, because the, the cloud packs are tested and packaged so that they are optimized for IBM Cloud Platform and they run, they, uh, they are deployed and they run immediately. Uh, allowing you to gain a uh, lot of time in terms of your project uh, shortness, right? You can you can shorten the project by a few short weeks. That's a gain for you. So it is one of the additional benefits that IBM Rocks provides for cloud packs. Now, that was the assessment we saw internally, right? Now let's see what uh, others are saying about IBM Public Cloud. This is one of the recent accolades or ratings, if you will, we got from outside uh, analysts. Uh, this is as recent as February of this year. And this is a uh, Gartner's Peer Insights Reviews, uh, where they actually have the users who have used the different clouds to rate uh, based on the same scale, right? Same metrics. They will ask people to rate uh, their experience and and what they found with each of the clouds. And IBM got the highest ranking with 4.7 out of five stars overall. And you can 
you know, when you get this slide deck, when you download it, you can go and find out more about this study uh, as to where they found IBM to be of more value and which areas, et cetera, and why is that so. So I just wanted to mention this um, as, as, uh, as an outside uh, metric measuring IBM public cloud uh, greatness. Earlier, I alluded to financial services um, cloud, the very first one in the industry that IBM announced. Uh, I did peek and looked at who actually signed up, and I did see one or two uh, financial services clients who signed up for the webinar. I hope they are in attendance, because this is very important. What IBM Financial Services Cloud does is uh, it provides a running start for banks and financial services organizations that wanted to take their journey to the cloud. How is that so? Well, when we started our work with Bank of America and subsequently with many other financial services organizations, um, we not only, as I mentioned, those 500 uh, regulatory and security requirements, we addressed those, but in the process of doing that, we actually started accumulating a catalog of uh, ISVs that are in the financial services industry that have applied those um, regulatory and security fixes uh, and exploited uh, the IBM capabilities and are able to prove the regulatory uh, requirements that the annual tests that the banks are required to run. And in the process of doing that, our catalog is growing. I think now it is about 30 or 40 different ISVs and SaaS solutions that are certified. So maybe it is not 100% all the ISVs that a bank has that can be found in the catalog, but it's not zero. It could be you know, anywhere from 40, 50, 60%. That's a huge leg up and a great start. And for the rest of the ones, IBM created what we call as a financial services policy framework, which can be used by the ISVs and other workloads and apply those um, techniques and apply the security services, et cetera, and become compliant with uh, whatever um, compliance requirements that they might have. In addition, IBM also provides a lot of services um, with, with our uh, expertise, we join with our partners uh, to help the partners provide and bring those services to you as well. You don't have to come directly to IBM. You can come through Arrow or any of your trusted partners that you're already working with. Ask them to ask IBM, how do I find out more about Financial Services Cloud? And then we will uh, work with that partner and bring forward to you the various different uh, briefings and uh, demonstrations on any proof of concept you wanted to do, we can get those done so that you as a bank can start your journey to the cloud with us and with the IBM and Arrow partner. Earlier I mentioned about the enterprise grade um, workloads. So as I mentioned, you know, bare metal, because of soft layer acquisition, we do incredibly well there. VMware, we are the number one ranked in three categories. Uh, as you can see here, the three different categories where we rank. A lot of people may not know, but IBM has moved over 100,000 VMs into the cloud. And we have now about over 2,100 clients uh, world over that have moved into IBM VMware Cloud. So we clearly have, and we are one of the large, actually not one of them, we are the largest VMware cloud operator. And uh, the solutions are available across uh, 60 of our worldwide data centers, and so we, we are pretty well placed in VMware. Next one is IBM Power. We offer both AIX and Series I uh, cloud uh, solution. And then, of course, last but not least, with our Red Hat OpenShift uh, acquisition, we provide uh, you know Kubernetes everywhere and for cloud native environments. I would say Red Hat and IBM Combo is the address for that. Um, there is really uh, uh, an incredible value in this particular last space uh, when you're considering building new applications for cloud using cloud infrastructure and cloud open DevOps type of uh, tooling, et cetera. So 
uh, across the board, whatever the clients need, IBM has that in the IBM cloud. Here is our eye chart. Uh, these are the 190 services that I mentioned earlier uh, that are available from our catalog. And you could see it starts with infrastructure down here, uh, and then there's the database, IoT over here, and then of course, how could I forget Watson and our analytics, uh, and of course, security and um, uh, tools as well. So there is a wide variety of these catalog services that are available, including important partners. And you will see a little bit later when we talk to the VMware stuff, um, what those additional partner services are. Now, so we kind of talked about IBM Cloud, its differentiators, et cetera. We're now kind of transitioning to workloads. And you know these are the most commonly found workloads. Doesn't mean we don't do AI. Doesn't mean we don't do um, you know machine learning. Doesn't do. Doesn't mean we don't do IoT. All those public service catalogs are there. But these are the most commonly found areas that we are seeing that are categorized here that are moving to the cloud. So uh, it's not a uh, all inclusive list, it is more commonly found a uh, list of workloads that we are seeing that are kind of moving to the cloud. IBM likes to think about the journey to the cloud in these kind of fashion, advising on cloud, moving to the cloud, building for the cloud or on the cloud, and of course managing on the cloud. In the advice category, uh, if you're not familiar with IBM Garage Services, I urge you to talk to your partner and raise your hand and ask them, can I get garage services engaged so that we could use this agile method to identify the low-hanging fruit or the low-hanging workload or whatever your criteria is. They will identify the workload that you want, the parameters that you set, working with you in an agile method uh, in a matter of two, three days and help you actually create a work plan or a project plan for it. Um, and then the partner can take that further and working with IBM, we can actually, you know, kind of configure it, architect it, configure it, size it, and give you a proposal, including all the services that are needed for you to take the journey to the cloud. But the starting point is always good if you could engage this IBM garage services along with the partner. And most of the partners know what an IBM garage service is, but in case they don't, just ask them to ask IBM, and um, and the partner can indeed sell this garage service just like they would sell the public uh, cloud services. In the build stage, there are a couple of workloads that we are actively seeing that are happening. One is building for cloud with cloud native. This is obviously the Red Hat OpenShift play. The second one is building for cloud with cloud packs. So a lot of our customers who have middleware products, now they're transitioning to these cloud packs, which are bundles of software, and many of them are looking at IBM Cloud Platform to run the cloud pack on. And um, I mentioned to you earlier, what are some of the benefits of running these cloud packs on the IBM Cloud Platform? Later on, I'll introduce to you a promo that's available to you. If you purchased a cloud pack recently, and you want to take advantage of the IBM Cloud Platform, there's a promo that's available for you to test drive the IBM Cloud for up to a year, uh, almost 125K or 250K value, where you can take your Cloud Pack, install it on IBM Cloud Platform, and run it for your development and testing. And you will only pay once you start actually the deployment and go into production. So that's the time when you pay for the IBM Cloud Platform, but until then, you don't have to find that extra box. You don't have to find that extra software. You don't have to find that extra resource who will put it down and fire up that Cloud Pack for you. That is all can be done, done in the IBM Cloud Platform for no fee or no charge to you. So that's the build part of it. In the move part, um, obviously VMware workloads have been moving fast and furious to the cloud. Uh, that's a big play. And in addition, we recently added SkyTap, which 
does a little bit of managed layer of services. I would call them PaaS type of services, which provides a little bit of management layer to handle some of the workloads, especially in the development space. And it can also handle x86 as well as power workloads. So if you have something that crosses those two platforms, uh, SkyTap is a good, good um, uh, public cloud service, IBM public cloud service that you may want to tap into. The other move is the big one, the power on IBM cloud. Uh, our IBM power cloud is obviously the, the invented the power and, you know, we have the best power cloud there is uh, for medium to large customers who are looking for shifting their workload from on-prem power to the cloud. That is our solution there. Lastly, and not least, because this is one of the areas you may want to consider getting your cloud journey started. If you haven't uh, done a disaster recovery or a backup strategy because you found the offsite expenses are too high or simply haven't gotten around to it because you know planning for testing and all that good stuff is, is too much work, et cetera, uh, you can consider this manage on cloud with backup disaster recovery for business continuity in the cloud. And uh, you'll be surprised to see how good the solution would be and how um, relatively simpler it would be to consider this as opposed to doing it on your own in a different data center. So uh, with that workload, I'm going to now transition into the VMware because uh, uh, as I said earlier, we wanted to touch a little bit on the VMware. Um, so before we get into the VMware, here are the typically the on-premise challenges that clients like you are seeing. You may identify with one or two or three or all of them. Uh, it could simply start with the fact that you might be running out of CapEx, or it is possible that you just don't have that burst capacity uh, that you need for seasonal workloads, or your latency between locations might be too much. And planning for that disaster recovery, as I mentioned earlier, might be a problem. The one main problem I also see is if you need new capacity or you need to refresh it, it takes months. It takes months to get those boxes acquired. You have to go through the procurement, you have to identify the box, you know, then you order it, it comes in, you have to put it in, you have to test it. It takes months to add that new capacity. So all of these ills are very, very well addressed by cloud, right? And particularly VMware cloud. So let's go to uh, the common use cases that we see with VMware clients. What are they using VMware Cloud for, right? So the very first one is about data center consolidation or capacity expansion that I mentioned about, right? And the second one is around migrating and transforming to modernize their workloads. So here there's a combination. You are taking your VMware, you're lifting and shifting to VMware in the cloud, and then you begin your transformation journey, perhaps using cloud native, which means Red Hat OpenShift uh, type of technology to refactor or reform the applications uh, and modernize them. That's what the second use case is. The third one is the disaster recovery, the standard one that I mentioned earlier, right? It's backup, uh, disaster recovery, or if you are looking for availability, uh, that is, um, you know, all kind of clubbed together in that one particular use case. The fourth one is around risk mitigation and compliance readiness. We talked quite a bit about it. Um, and, you know, this is where you're taking regulator workloads and, and trying to transform those. As you know, VMware, IBM VMware Cloud has the keep your own key and the highest security levels and uh, partnerships with high trust and uh, other partners you will see later on with the data protection and disaster recovery. So because of those reasons, I think our VMware cloud is a better choice uh, than what the market offers to you. Last but not least, uh, migrate, migrating your SAP workloads um, and HANA certification workloads, we offer that with our VMware uh, cloud. So th that's one of the use cases that we are seeing. Now, let's talk a little bit about our partnership with VMware. 
IBM's partnership with VMware has been a long one. It's over 10 years, and because of that partnership, um, we have been working very closely with them, and we have established a joint innovation lab from which a lot of new um, capabilities and new technologies have come up in the joint space for us. So our VMware cloud, therefore, is, we think, is slightly better than anyone else that offers that. We also offer a choice when it comes to VMware Cloud. We, we can let you bring your own license or you can buy with the VMware license. I believe we are unique in that sense that we can allow you to do that. And, uh, we, and you know, all of the integrated uh, additional technologies because of the innovation, we also worked with many of the uh, affiliates like Zerta, like Beam, and high trust I mentioned earlier, all of these are integrated into our public cloud service. So you can purchase them and you can combine them and you can operate them from one console. So they are not distinct different products that you see. It, they all work together as a single console. So that's the biggest benefit of uh, having VMware Cloud from IBM running for you. As I mentioned earlier, of course, we migrated over 2,000 clients and we are the largest operator of VMware workloads in the world. So um, essentially, we have a very strong leadership position in VMware Cloud. So let me talk about a couple of things in each of these layers, even though it's kind of redundant. In the VMware space, whereas the security leadership, I mentioned that we have the highest level of key management encryption. Because of that, you see these all these other things follow down here. Um, uh, additional uh, benefits are also there, but the key one I wanted to choose to highlight is the, uh, the key management level. In the enterprise grade space, a couple of things. Hardened design from requirements based on many, many large customers, right? And operational consistency across uh, on-prem and IBM cloud. What I mean by that is we have had numerous, numerous clients who were able to shift their VMware workloads without you know, huge amount of transformation that they needed to do to take it to the cloud. Virtually, they are almost picking it up and taking it to the cloud very easily. That's what I mean. Um, the last one in, on this particular pillar I want to talk about is the, the modernization of your VMware workloads once you get them into the IBM cloud. You can also use that Red Hat OpenShift and manage and transform your workloads across VMware's and the containers. So this is a unique way of, you know, for you to bring over the workloads to the cloud. You don't have to wait to transform them. You bring over to the cloud, and then you can transform them uh, to, to the cloud native environments. And lastly, as I mentioned here, you know, we kind of moved about 100,000 VMs. Uh, we have migrated to, to the cloud. So we have deep expertise just between us and of course our IBM partners and us combined, we can definitely uh, help you get your VMware uh, cloud journey uh, off to a great start. Now we talked a lot about VMware cloud, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Where is the proof? What is the proof? So we commissioned Forrester uh, to have them go study why five of our clients actually did their VMware cloud journey with us. So there were three financial services clients, one IT services client, and one data analytics client. So the most important one that I would like to point out to is that they were able to reduce, these clients were able to reduce data center costs by average of 40% over three years. Whether it is the freed up space, whether it is freed up energy, freed up resources, et cetera. But an important thing that most of us tend to forget is that the cloud computing is like um, an expandable and shrinkable resource. What I mean by that is normally when a client has to construct capacity in an on-premise world, they don't know what their peaks and valleys are and what their you know seasonal peak is. So they study right over years and they say, okay, here are my peaks, here's my seasonal peak, et cetera and then they have to buy the maximum they need for the seasonal peak, not just peaks and valleys for the regular time, but whenever the seasonal peak is there, they have to buy that 
and they buy that and they put that in their data center. Now imagine if your average utilization is around 55, 60%, even when you combine nights and days and whatnot, et cetera, and then your seasonal peaks, you know, is at around 95% or whatever, leaving 5% margin for yourself. There's a huge gap between your average consumption and your peak consumption. Cloud does magic on that. That's why cloud yields uh, over a period of time humongous efficiency back to you because you can buy the, the average if you can get come at a good average um, with with some you know business logic and understanding with your workloads how they vary, you buy the base as as low as you can get to, right? And then you remain the remaining computing. You leave it. You leave it for the expansion when you need it because that's what the cloud does. The cloud is supposed to provide you that extra capacity, the burst capacity, the seasonal capacity when you need it and you consume that. So the way you buy cloud, you buy a big basket of amount, and then you're consuming out of it. So you don't have to worry about actually buying a lot more than you need, like you do on on-premise. Once you buy on-premise with a large amount, then you're stuck with it, because you're paying for it on a regular basis. So that's one of the biggest factors that is in your favor, and when you work with your partner, you have to be smart and ask them for the right sizing of the cloud so that they do not make a mistake of sizing it much higher than when you compare with your on-premise environment, then you know, you're, you're wondering where's the business case. Well, if you size it properly for the cloud and take advantage of the cloud's capability to expand and shrink, then you will be uh, absolutely coming out well ahead, as illustrated by this particular study. So that 40% over three years, right? Where did it come from, right? These are the areas you could see. Data center cost avoided, 1.4 million. Operations efficiency, 930K. Security efficiency, 410K. And reduced downtime. Apparently, you know, the average downtimes there were about avoiding four downtime events per year for whatever reason. Uh, they were avoiding that, and that charge you could see is about 330K. So all this combined, they had 153% ROI, and of course, you know, uh, there are other side benefits that are being shown here, such as developers having 40% more efficiency with access to Red Hat OpenShift, which is kind of goes with the story of combining the PaaS, the modernization, to your VMware workloads uh, over a period of time. So that's what 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 this uh, study is talking about. Here are a set of logos, our clients who have done their VMware journeys to the cloud with us, and a lot more. These are just a few. Uh, there are actually many, many, many customers uh, that we can definitely, um, whatever industry that you are in, uh, we can definitely find one that reflects your industry and be able to showcase their journey and the learnings from that particular customer to you. Here is the last slide for me. Um, I mentioned that there are promos that you could take advantage of, right? This is not all empty talk, right? So one of the things that IBM is doing is when you work with your partner, uh, your partner can request IBM and say, hey, I want to take this VMware workload journey, but I want to do it with no risk to me. What can you do for me? Well, we'll give you 20 VMs for free for two months. Right, or five VMs for two months for VMware on you know IBM Cloud Solutions, and we will give you some expert services to move those workloads. As simple as that. And the partner can invoke this for you. So get in touch with your partner. Be ready to identify that VMware project that you want to test out in the cloud. And once you run a, a test and you feel comfortable, then you can say, I'm ready to move to the cloud you know, how do we proceed? And then you can do the cloud assessment. Arrow has a great cloud assessment tool that they are giving to their partners. They can use that, uh, do the assessment, figure out what those um, steps are that are needed, and then they will help you architect the solution, size it, configure it, 
and give it to you. And if you want to hire them to run your, some of your managed services, they will also do that for you. The partners are great. The second one is around power system, um, similar one. We give you 20K uh, plus uh, we give you 10 days of expert services to help you migrate a piece of workload to test it uh, for power workload. Uh, one of the things that we have a promo around second half uh, that is actually addressed to the clients. If you do a 50K power um, cloud workload, and consume 50K, um, then we will actually give you five tech credits to you. But this is only available through your Arrow partners. So raise your hand and ask the partner uh, to learn more about the Power Cloud, um, you know, this uh, promo. Last but not least, the Cloud Packs on Rocks. If you have Cloud Packs middleware products that you're running today on prem, you would like to take advantage of this promo. I mentioned earlier the value of this is around 125k to 250k. You can bring in the cloud path, fire it up in the cloud platform, run all your development and testing work on it, and when you're ready for production, that's when you pay. That's when you actually buy the cloud platform necessary to run your cloud path workload. So it's a very, very good promo uh, that you should definitely talk to your partner if you are uh, using and are purchasing or looking at a cloud pack today. Last one, uh, this uh, cloud object storage uh, around, you know, if you want to do a storage project, I don't know if you can do a full disaster recovery um, in two months, but you can test out some backups or file storage and how to, you know, put it there and how to get it back uh, type of scenarios. You could definitely do a POC. Again, work with your partner and your partner can bring in Arrow's resources, and we can also, the partner can also bring IBM resources to the table to help you with any of these problems. With that, I pass it back to Katie or the next speaker. Thank you, Nalo. Um, this is John Austin with Arrow. I just wanted to give a quick one minute overview of kind of how Arrow fits into this, um, this equation. Nalo did a great job of really going through the the value of IBM Cloud and Arrow has teamed with IBM um, on a public cloud initiative. And our value in this, you know, through the channel and through the classic, um, you know, motion that we as a distributor do, but also as a technology and services aggregator. And it's really three pillars and I'll just go through this real quick. Um, first is our cloud platform, Aerosphere, which is a multi-cloud, a management platform that can be extended through our partners to end users to help them manage the provisioning, procurement, quoting um, of cloud services. Um, IBM is very integral in this and we've developed a lot of API integration with Aerosphere and the IBM cloud, so this is a seamless experience. Nala mentioned the services part of this and some of the services that us as Arrow and our partners can bring to the table around assessments, migrations, um, cost optimization. Um, these are some of the services that we can bring out to the end customers. And then Nalo did a really good job of, you know, kind of laying out the use cases and the focused areas where IBM Cloud shines um, around VMware and IBM Cloud and power on cloud and um, backup disaster recovery and then, and then the Red Hat piece of this. So Arrow's role in this with our partners is to make sure that you know, the customer experience is is great with IBM Cloud. Um, I think the t technology of IBM has come a long way in the cloud in this chapter too, um, but we can provide a lot of other services through our partners, um, including the Aerosphere platform and services and, and support from a technical perspective around some of these focus solutions. So with that, I will thank everybody for attending. If there are questions or anyone would like any further information, uh, my name and email address is on this slide. Feel free to reach out and uh, look forward to hearing from you. Thank you and have a great rest of your day. Thank you everyone for attending today and thank you Nalu and John and our attendees. Have a great day. <laughs>